are actually a basketball player and you're not playing in the Butterball Classic, then what you doing? All right, and we're back in North Side of Sports with Coach Butter and Jay. Today's show is sponsored in part by First Place Transportation, Family Elite Groups and Services, Sophisticated Urban, Geeks and Athletes, Altruistic Insurance Group, Next Page Force Youth Basketball Organization, and Presidential Basketball Workouts. Today, we're going to get into uh, some youth sports first. That'll be our first segment. And second segment, Coach Jay, what you got for that second segment? Uh, we're going to talk, we're going to speak about uh, my possible baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> Serena Williams, we're going to talk about that a little bit in some of these local games uh, for Saturday. For the uh, high school, college? college. We'll okay. College okay, what about high school? You're going to do it in high school, just college, we're going to stick with uh, college. We'll, we'll see where it, where it takes us. Okay, and okay. We, and, uh, and uh, somebody was getting doing some raunchy stuff at the baseball game. At the baseball game. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna talk about that too. Okay. So with us, with the youth sports, uh, we're gonna talk about the Butterball Classic, the UAPB basketball camp. Uh, we're gonna give our definition, and I'm sure both of our definition will be a little bit different, but I'm sure we'll be close as possible. We'll be real close to people think on the definition of an elite player in any sport, what we think an elite player is or should be. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about parents' responsibility towards recruiting. Uh, and also, we're going to talk about what coaches, what we think coaches are looking for in athletes, especially those that are coming in from middle school, going into high school. And so, to, so after that, you know, after we come back from this quick commercial break, we'll get right into the Butterball Classic and we'll go from there. All right? All right, and we're back to North Side of Sports with Coach Butter. Jay. Today, we're going to open up with the Classic. The Butterball Classic. The Classic. The if butter, you ain't at the Classic, if what you If you ain't at? playing in the Classic, <laughs> what are you doing? And today, we're going to open up. Last week, we gave a big shout out to one of our good friends, Josh Hayes. This week, we want to open up with a shout out to both of our guys again, Nathan Claiborne at North Little Rock. Doc. North, Nathan Claiborne was the assistant coach for North Little Rock High when we went on a championship run. Yeah. And he, a lot of people don't know that he was really the, I'm going to say foundation. I'll go that far because he was the first one that really, uh, that came in to talk to a lot of the kids. Coach Rice is my guy. He was the general. Rice was the foundation that put it together. And, you know, a lot of kids leaned on Rice. And then Coach Rice came in and orchestrated it. But shout out to Nathan Claiborne. Wait, one more hint. Uh, tidbit, tidbit on, on Coach Claiborne that I learned. Uh, Did you know that he was the coach of Mary? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Did you know that he didn't win a state title, right? Right. He left before they won the state title. Before they won the state title. Here's a tidbit. Not only did they win the next year, they invited him back and gave him a ring. That's, how much, that's how much love he gets. Well, but again, he the foundation. See, he's the foundation to yeah. to different to, yeah. to Mary and to North Little Rock because he was at Lakewood Middle School for so long. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the guys that, we, I always use my son, my son, but we started, but they was winning, like having undefeated seasons at middle school for years. Like for years, you really had to check his record. And so a lot of, if y'all recall, now I'm a North Little Rock person to the heart, but if you recall, a lot of people was wanting to leave out of North Little Rock when it came to sports. They didn't want to go to North Little Rock High. But then once they got Claiborne up there, oh my God, it was like everybody was like, I'm going to North Little Rock High, I'm going to North Little Rock High. So once again, today's shout out, so our coach spotlight is Nathan Claiborne at North Little Rock High, and congratulations. I mean, not my bad, and good luck this year. And congratulations on getting a head coaching job, and, congrats, and good luck for the rest of the year. And you know our old saying is, should have been a Wildcat. <laughs> That's our thing. Shout out to him. Um, so getting back to this Butterball Classic real quick. The Butterball Classic is nearing the end. We about three weeks left. Uh, yeah, and then we'll be into the playoff single elimination tournament. Wait, wait, hold up, uh, hold up, hold up. Talk hold to up. me. Hey, can we can we 
We're gonna pull the names for the playoff this year, right? Yes, it'll be yeah. live stream right, right here. here. Yes, right here. We're gonna do it live. You heard it first. Yeah, we're gonna live stream the playoffs on, I forgot what day I did it on the, the, the 9th, no, the 10th. It's on the 10th, September 10th. We're gonna live stream it on our on our channel, Butterball Classic Events on YouTube. We're gonna live stream the playoffs. My, my goal is to have a board but we pulling the names out the hat. We're going to pin them on the board so everybody will know who you're playing in the first round. And it's a single elimination tournament. So if you lose your first game, you're out. But good luck to everybody, and we're looking forward to that. Um, the other thing is UAPB basketball camp. So oh. Was, yeah, we're going to jump. We're going to jump. We're going to jump. Okay. I like it. You didn't go down there, did you? No. Nah. Did you hear a lot of good stuff about it? I did. I did. I what? heard a lot. Of, I heard a lot of interesting things as well. Was anything you want to do? Yeah. Gotta have commitment. Well, I was there. The UAPB basketball camp that he just had, uh, Bozeman. It was big. It was about, in my opinion, about 200 kids there, give or take. It was kids from everywhere, not just Arkansas. I met a lady that was down there with her brother, her little brother from Kansas City. Or St. Louis. St. Louis. It was a lot of people. So yeah. I think that's big for not just Arkansas, but for, I mean, not that's just for UAPB, but for Arkansas as a but, whole. But also, also to, to piggyback on that, that says a lot about the way in which he's growing his program. Now exactly. That you have more people coming from out of state as well as in state. Right. I think that says a lot about what he got going. Right. And then, that's, like you say, you got people coming. And they say, what's about? If, I'm 200, if it wasn't 200 kids there, I'd be willing to say it was 199. Because <laughs> it was a lot of kids. Now, the format in which they did it in, I thought was great. They had like, I want to say about eight courts going. They had about, I don't know how many kids they had on each court going that was rotating like, I think it was like every 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, each station had different. What they worked on was different. And you had a lot of kids really going at it. So local kids and parents, I think we need to take heed to stuff like this that will propel Arkansas and your thoughts of basketball in Arkansas. UAPB is a division one college. It's on the rise. And we need to take heed and not be saying, you know how people always think, oh, that's just UAPB because we from here. So we think that, but they on the rise, and we need to try to get in on that and get a piece of that and ride that and, way. And also, also I think one of the things you, you tip it is uh, he offered a lot of scholarship. What I've been looking on, I checked the Instagram and stuff like that. I see where I, if he they saying he he, he offered him so. I think he ordered, he offered a lot that says a lot about yeah. him and a lot of the talent he stated. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it must be good enough that he felt the need to offer it. Uh, so shout out to those that received offers. Uh, don't underestimate an offer. Uh, no matter where it comes from, if somebody thinks enough of you to offer you a scholarship to play any sport right, for free, don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. And think you bigger than yeah. this particular yeah. offer. Cause some of y'all, some of y'all, I think the real deal, true, but I'm probably skipping ahead what we got Good. is some of our parents can't afford school, so you got to you don't, you got to look that gift horse in the mouth. You, you know what I mean? In the mouth. That's right. So you don't ever think you bigger. Don't think you bigger than what's offered to you. Right. Cause if somebody offers you something, they must think highly of you. And that's the thing. So accept it. Like I said, look at your forfeit the force in the mouth and, and thank you. A lot uh, of people don't get that. It's a lot of people very, don't get very, it. very, very small percentage. A lot more people not gonna get a scholarship. That's right. More people gonna get it. That's so. right. And I think that I think that with, with you somebody get offered that scholarship, it may look it may make somebody else realize that I need to tighten up. Right. I but, need to tighten up. So congratulations to everybody that got a and if um, you know of any more offer. camps this year that we have not mentioned or anything. Right. Um, give us a shout out, call us, right. text us. You know, if there's any coaches it. in any of the schools in Arkansas, whether you D1, D2, JUCO, whatever, NAIA, give us a holler. Coach Butter, that's Jay, y'all know how to get in touch with us. Yep. Let us know so we can get you on here and get you, get us some uh, dates so we can get them out so we can try to get these kids in college. 
Arkansas is a real hotbed and we're growing. We get hotter. We get real hot. We get very hot because they they slept on us for so long, but we on the rise. Look out Arkansas. Yeah. Now yeah. the next thing we're gonna talk about is what is the definition of an elite player in any sports? It's four or five things that are foundation of that. And you know, uh, what you mean, Coach Jay? What, what's, what, give me, I'll tell you what, Coach Jay. Give me three or four things that you think a person has to have to qualify to be considered a DB player. And one of the first thing that pops in my head is, are you self-discipline? And are you self-disciplined, self-motivated? Are you are you a team player? Cause we talk about it yep. in team games, right? Yep. Not individual games, correct? Yep. And I want to see I want to see how you deal with adversity. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Everybody can't. Everyone, everything is going good. I think everybody can handle that. Everybody can handle it. Yep. You see what I'm saying? But when stuff is going bad, chips down. How you gonna handle it? You know what I mean? Yep. I agree with and that. The other thing is, like I said, the self-discipline. What are you gonna do when we're not practicing? Right. You know what I mean? Are right. you gonna do far as we talk about youth sport? Are you gonna do the right thing in school so you can play on the weekend? Yep. I can't depend on you and Kenny to come to the game. That's right. You see what I'm right. saying? Yep. That's self-discipline. You got to be disciplined when I'm not there. Nobody's around. You know? And nobody's around. And your work ethic. Are you gonna be, you say you my best player, but you in the back of every line. Yep. You in the back of my layup yep. line, you in the back of this line, you in the back. Every How time. you the best? How you the best? You, you gonna lead from the front of the back. How you elite? How can you consider yourself right. elite when you don't lead in nothing? Right. The right. first thing, and one of the things to pick back off what you said, like uh, you said in this work ethic, you said you ended up saying, well, what is your work ethic? You have to have a work ethic. You have to be willing to do the stuff that nobody else is willing to do. Are you willing to sacrifice? One guy once, a wise man once told me, rest his soul, Ron Crawford. He said, elite players are the ones that are willing to sacrifice something for the sake of the team. If it's a team sport, you have to be willing to sacrifice something. And, and, and what I got from that was, let's say your jump shot is not working today. What else do you bring to your team to help them win? Let's say you shoot good shots that you make with your eyes closed. Yeah. But today your eyes open and you can't make that shot. Right, right. But you go down and get 10 rebounds. Right, you right. Get, you diving on the floor for loose right. ball. You got seven or eight assists. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Does a, does a, does a elite player, can he motivate his team? He should be able to. That's, that's part of the foundation. Okay. okay. To me, that's part okay. of, that's what I'm saying. That's part of the okay. foundation. You have to be a team player. You you have to be the one that sacrifices. Like the sacrifice is, I gotta come in and look at my teammate and say, hey, let's go, baby. Let's get going. You got to be a team leader. But, but that also means you gotta be a butthole sometimes too, huh? So well, well, but guess what? Okay. And, and I agree with that. Here's the thing. If as a teammate or friend, if I can't tell you what's right, then we ain't friends. We ain't, we ain't a team if I can't come to you. But guess what? I can't tell you, come on, Jay, man, push, push. But I'm at the end of the line. I can't come. That's why people don't listen to those people. Because your parent or your grandparent or your uncle or your cousin told you you're supposed to be good, but you be <laughs> from the back of the damn line. Right. Hey, that ain't no leader. Hey, you know what's funny? What's that? All these people's parents come up in there and they'll say, they'll say, Man, he was killing his own out there in the drive. He tearing him up. He, That's right. He be doing it. They do good to his little friends. Yeah. And uh, my friends always, yeah, they not trying to tear his head off. They not trying to tear his head And ain't nobody pushing him. Yeah, ain't, ain't nobody making them do that. He, they, they have, that's fun. Right. That's fun. Right. That's, that's fun. So, so what, go we ahead and give us your quick. Uh, so the, my, one of the other things was a team player. The other one was, are you coachable? Yeah. Uh, and you kind of touched that. You just didn't say it like that. But you right. said, are you coachable? When, again, when your shot is off. When you didn't miss two or three layups, when you missing free throws, what else do you offer your team? Can your coach come to you and say, come on, baby, we need you, without you pouting, without you saying cut, 
He telling you something to do, he trying to motivate you to do better, and you ain't proud. You gotta be coachable. You gotta be coachable. The other thing is, you can't have dysfunctional parents. Mm. That's just my opinion. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What? That is, but, that, but that's parental. No, but that still makes you consider the or not. Because that means, that, that, and I don't mean okay, individual. Let me, let me, let me finish. Okay. But the reason why I say that, yes, you can have a parent that's dysfunctional, that's crazy. But yo, you have to come, from my, this is my view. You can be a hell of a ball player, but a coach won't go to fool with you if you have a people behind you, like your support system, that's dysfunctional. And what I mean by dysfunctional, cussing the coach out because of the decision he made. That's what I mean. Now, do you have people that can play through that? Yes. But if you have a good support system, in my opinion, that helps you be me. It's just my opinion. Because if you don't, guess what? Now we gotta watch you and see if the coach getting on to you is gonna affect you the right way because you got a support system that's telling you, if you will forgive him, that's my opinion. So that's a part of your bag. That somebody might think different. They might say, well, that doesn't mean if you are or not. I disagree. Because if, if they think enough of you, then they're gonna uh, they're gonna approach you different. Parents gotta change to make their kids better. That's my opinion. Is that three or four? And the other one is you have to be willing. You have to be willing to make the sacrifice for the team. There's no title for that, but we say it that. But you have to be willing to make that sacrifice. Work ethic is number one. I don't care what you say. If you only work out when the school team got practice, yeah. when your coach got practice on your AU team, I can't consider you elite. Do you have to be the best at everything? No, you don't. Nah, you're, not. you're not going to be the best because there's somebody else doing it over there. But to me, the number one thing every to be considered to be elite, you got to have work ethic. That's my opinion. Which goes back into the next thing. Which goes back into the next thing. Uh -huh. And then you got, and you're going into it, you got to have quick. Parents are responsible. They're, they're part of the recruiting process. You can help your kid or you can hurt them. And if you're doing all that yelling at the refs, yelling at the coaches and hollering in the stands and all that, that can hurt your kid's uh, recruiting process. Parents, please stop that. Put your kid on a team where you trust the coach. Is he going to be perfect? No, but you got to trust him and let it go. The other thing is what coaches are looking for in athletes. Again, what does his foundation look like? What does his background look like? You know, how is his, his body language? What is his temperament? How is his work ethic? Like, what does he do? Do I gotta keep watching him from running to the line? Do I gotta say, hey, you're running to the line, but you study two steps away from the line. Nobody wants to keep going through that. So remember, parents, you can help or hurt your child's recruitment and sometimes y'all don't even know it. Yes. And I don't think you need to do that. You need to be let me put your son or daughter on a team where you trust the coach 100% basketball-wise, which is in the gym, training, and all that, and get out the way. All right? So we're going to uh, make this trust the coach. We're going to come back. We're going to get into a little world sports. We'll see you in a minute. You know side of sports. All right, and we're back. The North Side of Sports with Coach Butter. Jay. Today's show is sponsored in part by First Place Transportation, Family Elite Groups and Services, Geeks and Athletes, Altruistic Insurance Group, Next Page Force, Sports Sports Organization, and Presidential Basketball Workouts. We're going to get into a little national sports. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Let's get into a little national sports. All right, all right. All right. We're going to talk about uh, everybody's favorite tennis player. <laughs> my, my almost baby mama. His almost baby mama. <laughs> oh, Serena. And her sister. I'll take the sister. Okay. Venus. It's a uh, double date. Then we may touch a little bit of that football. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, hey, we got to get the open. Okay, so, so, okay we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Which one you open up with? All right, let's, let's do it this right here first. 
Serena Williams is her last tournament. Uh -huh. She says she's retired. She's retired. It's her last tournament at the U.S. Open. And she's in the second round against Annette Cavallite, however you say it. Right. Annette Cavallite, however you say it. Who? Serena Williams. Serena. That girl so, break number two. Yeah. Right. So it's going on as we speak in the U.S. Open. And I have to say that because I really love her. Yeah, Serena. She changed She changed the tennis game forever. I was already a tennis fan, but not too right. much on the women's side. Right. But she carried her sister came. It blew me away. Now all I watch is women. I don't uh -huh. really watch the men no more. You're the only one who watch women. <laughs> tennis wise. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, tennis wise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Serena won the first set, they say. Yeah, the second set. Yeah, they the second set now. Now, if she beat her, how does that look to the tennis world? She got to win. She got to go out on top, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, she got to. I, I, I love it. Because this, this is not her last tournament. This yeah, her last yeah, this is her last one. So after this tournament, she's done. done. She's done. Or was she going to finish the year? No, she's done. She's done. She's done. She's done. She's done. I hope she win then. Yeah, hope you got one. Pull it for Come on, Serena. Let's go, Serena. Let's go, Serena. All right, Serena. Okay. For more than one reason. Let's go, Serena. <laughs> you got to remember the catch. Serena catch. You got to catch. I want I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a petition right now. Listen, if listen. Serena Williams win and make it to the championship, she got to wear the catch. You got to bring the catch to that. Gotta I'm, I'm, I'm about for that. I'm if you agree that. with that, hit the like button on this. Let us know you with us. We, we are putting in whatever we need to do. We know she got plenty of money, so we ain't got to give her no money. But if yeah. we got to buy this cat suit, I got a hot hundred <laughs> on the cat suit. I got I'm a hot hundred on the Nike cat suit. I'm and, and, and whatever we I got some partners that we money. We can come up with it, Corinne, let us know. We just want to see you in a cat suit. That's it. <laughs> I really like the tennis. I'm watching for the tennis. I'm watching for the cat suit. <laughs> Call me if you make the championship. All right. All right. Well, I know, hey, hey, hey. I need to mention in some um, Halloween outfits. Somebody going to be so, uh, Serena. They might have to find a Serena. Hey, somebody somebody going to be Serena. Serena is here. I don't know. So what are we going to do with tennis after they done? Do you think that, what do you think Serena's going to do? Or has she given us any clue or anything about what she's going to do afterwards? She really ain't said. I don't know. I haven't really been following it like that until I did hear that this supposed to be. Yeah, I didn't I, know if this was her actual last time. I, I don't know what her new thing is. She just, last I know, she liked to shop online. Yeah. So she got to so She gonna break the internet. But she got a daughter. She probably just gonna build a daughter. Build a daughter up, you know. I wonder if she gonna push her towards. Uh, she she is. She is. She, she, is. she got her into this world already. Got to. Yeah, can't, you got, not, not you got to just try it. Yeah, you got to try it. I'm not just trying. I mean, you know. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, tennis world, we looking out. Remember, we gonna be watching it with all our eyes, all four of my eyes. You see me? You see me, Jay? Look, all four of my eyes. Hoping she make it to the championship, and I'm gonna start the petition. So we already got the signatures <laughs> to get her to wear the catch suit. The catch suit, gotta have. Hey, and I say that like the like the new meme say, respectfully. Respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. I don't mean no disrespect, but we would love to see the catch suit one, one more time. More. Just go out with a scratch. Just go out and get it. Bring it back. All right. So now. Uh, what about the, what else you had on there about the hey, national so, sports? So, hold on, I, I got to get this. I want to get, we'll get to the, to the, to the game. But listen, have you, have y'all watched, have y'all noticed, uh, um, in baseball now, so many people get caught doing sex acts in baseball. Sex acts yeah, in baseball? Yeah, man, you must be on the rock. No, I mean, yeah, I ain't man, been, the man, I ain't been on The man and his woman at the Oakland A's game, right? They go ham. Man, she, they going to work up there and stand all the way at the top because you know it's not that many at the Right. Bay. So you go all the way to the top, all the action down there. All the action. So so Everybody get, looking down get, anyway. Man, they get, they, they ain't looking up. The Oakland A's, the couple, what's sad is in LA, in the Oakland, uh -huh. the, the couple's still on the loose. They can't even find a couple that did. They got pictures of them and stuff, but they can't catch them. So and, is that like they the first, they the, like oh, they the latest. Well, them and there's a couple in the Blue Jays game that got kicked out of the game because they was getting it on. Go she, ahead. She was, man, they was going to be looking buck wild. Yeah. I said, man, this is the baseball game? Boy, they white. They getting buck wild. Full of that beer. Beer and liquor and everything. And the pills. <laughs> My man, he got him one of them blue ones. He wanted to try a new prescription. Hey, man, he wants some of that, man. He man. needs some of that. I tell you, but people today they cold blooded, man. I it would just be baffling to me to just sit up there and, and do that. I don't think I could go like that. <laughs> Not, I mean, like you way up there, right. you know, but not like in the that. baseball field. I don't but know all of them caught on camera. Right. 
Right, I couldn't go like this. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to go like that, man. I'm just even, even with everything I go through now, I, I wouldn't when I was 21. I don't know about the new one, knowing that somebody could just turn their head and see us at a national baseball. Hey, game. well, you know, Danny Jackson did have his song in the club. I don't care who's watching it. Yep, yeah. She did. She yep. was the first one. I said, yep. I said what? Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? saying? Hey. Hey, that, I just, I just, yeah. that just, I guess it's the age of living stop in. just because people walking by watching us. I don't give a damn what they say. I want you now. Yeah. yeah. What do you say? Anytime. <laughs> boom, boom. There you Any go. Place, I want you now. Don't yeah. care. So that to me is. Well, they're going ham, so I guess, well, and with us, with us talking about it down here in Arkansas, yeah. can you imagine what they like other places? So they mean this thing's going to catch on because oh, people going to keep trying. It's going to, the worst thing they can is a disorder condo. Hey, I, I'm, I'm going to go on watch the news and I'm waiting on the travelers to come back <laughs> and see what they're going to do out there. Somebody's going to be out there getting it on. Somebody's going to try to book a suite. Somebody's going to get it. You know they ain't going to have no problem booking them suites now. Boy. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I'm sorry. It's the suites are booked up for the next, next uh, two years. Man, we in the bleachers. We in the bleachers. We outside. Baby. We outside. Yeah. outside. Like Jada can say, I'm outside. We're outside. All right, all right. So, so what, I got something with you. We, we jumped in. Uh, what you think about why, why did it take so long for the Nevada Boxing Company, whatever it is, association, to retire? Uh, Moody Mayweather. They just retired him. I mean, not retired him. Hall, uh, Put him in the Hall of Fame. He was in boxing. But then, I mean, how long did it take? He in boxing for like two years, eh? Yeah, but, but you never know. Anybody can come back with a yeah. You might come back with another one, so you ain't really retired. Yeah. You know, when you yeah. say you're done making it in the boxing world. Yeah, I just saw that today. Yeah, he deserved it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, for like sure. outside of Tyson. For sure, he deserved it. Outside of Tyson, he's the best fighter to be, though. And, I, and it may be like a year or two waiting for it. I don't know. I just saw that today, and I was like, why is this new? You know what I'm saying? Like, that was coming. Yeah, but know? he, outside of Tyson, that's my, one of my favorite. Tyson, my greatest, best fighter of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like Tyson. Ain't nobody mess with Iron Mike. That's Iron Mike. Yeah, yeah. I like Iron Mike. I like, Iron Mike. I like you know? And I like the cards with the sport when he was. Like crazy looking. Yeah. Like, yeah. I say crazy looking, but when he was ferocious looking. Yeah, like when he had the tie all on, come out there with the black trunks. Yeah, just straight, just straight, straight in your butt. Like that. That's why I like that. That was my Oh, thing. man. You, know, you, know, you, know, you better come on with this shit quick. But you ain't got long. You ain't got long. Man, yeah. he was so fast with it. My boy Lee Lee used to be on this. So he was posted on all that. Made us realize the difference in a fighter. Yeah. A boxer and a brawler. And they used to always say Tyson was a brawler. You know, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't necessarily uh, technique, but he had to he had a little bit of everything. That's what right. Made right. And he, he, his style, see it's like everything it, his style was different. Right, right. You know, because he could come here jam, but he was doing so, so much. He was so swift. And now he was so swift and so much power, you couldn't yeah. keep up with it. I love the boxing. Right, that boxing. Man. Right. That's my job. Tyson, man, they did him wrong in three years. I think, you know, that's maybe a story for different days. You know. You can't, you can't go in there and take it, though. I don't think he did. I'm just you can't do it every day. Three in the morning? You know, I can't say what you did behind the door. I don't right. know. You don't never know, yeah. That's sad. That. You don't never know. Man, I got a daughter, man. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you can't take that either, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you can't, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I ain't gonna, but I'm going to tell my daughter this is going to go somewhere. You got no business up there. I don't care what he call you for. No, but you if you go up there, you got to know what he call him for. That's it. Just leave it at the door. Man. Leave it at the door. If you bring yourself up, then leave it at the door. Knock, go on. That's it. That's it. Or come get it out the front desk. That's it. Come front desk. Leave me at the front yeah, desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got no business at your home. Nah, nah. You got no business at your home. Also, tell me about that uh, Big Three Championship. The Big Three Championship. You know, Stevie Jackson and won it back to back. Man. Follow on it, follow on it, but not like it was. Especially when COVID hit, you watch it, you watch yeah. the gist of it. Because it was it was new, interesting, you know, then it's been his time, you know. Yeah. So, and I think that, I, one of my things, I want to see, Joe didn't play this shit. One of my, on my bucket list is to see a three on uh, a big three game. I want to see that before I get yeah, out. Yeah, you got to, you got to check it out. All right, so that's a little world news. Um, we're gonna take a little small commercial break and we'll come back 
and we'll get into some thoughts of different topics that we may need to discuss next time or coming up and, uh, you know, give a little some personal accounts and give some shout outs to some people, uh, talk about some upcoming events that we know about, and uh, we'll be back. All right, and we back. Coach Butter, Jay. the North Side of Sports. Yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> Today's nice. show is sponsored in part by First Place Transportation, Family League, Groups and Services, Sophisticated Urban, Geeks and Athletes, Altruistic Insurance Group, Next Page Force Youth Organization, and Presidential Basketball Workouts. One of the things that I wanted to close in with today in our last segment is parents' responsibility towards recruiting. That was one of the things we talked about in the first segment, but I wanted to give my opinion, and that's all this is, is my opinion. I cannot tell a parent what to do, I wouldn't try. I would just give you my opinion on what I think it is. You know, when you hear parents sometimes say, uh, I'm not gonna make my son or my daughter go work out. I'm not gonna make them go outside and you know run laps. I'm not gonna make them do this, that, and other. But then when I see some of y'all, y'all ready to whoop the coach or or you ready to jump on the kid. It, to me that's backwards. Because as long as that that, that child, whether it's a boy or girl, is not grown, I think that as a parent, if you know that that child wants that sport or it could be a regular it could be anything it could be a computer class i think that as a parent we should push them towards what it is that they want to do so i don't think it's like you're pushing them to sports or put it's whatever it is they want to do if my son or my daughter tell me they want to be a professional athlete but they 14 13 14 years old they're still not all the way mature you feel me so you sometimes gonna have to tell them hey Get your butt up, let's go out here and run these laps. Get your butt up, we take you to the gym where you can get some shots up. Because if we don't, what we're saying is we're not going to push you towards your goals in life. What do you think about that, Jay? My thought process is it's like this. If you if you start something, I want you to work hard. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want you. are going to do something. That's my household. Right. You're going to do something. I don't care. You can be on the archery team. Right. But you're going to do something. Something. You know what I'm saying? Now, whether you grade it or not, right. depends on you. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. Um, right. Okay. My house, just speaking for mine personally, you know, college is always something I always wanted. So I was going to pay that regards. You see what I'm right. saying? Right. But I want you to get all that you deserve because you earned it. You see what I'm right. saying? But if you're not going to put that work in, and things like that, then you don't deserve what, you get what you deserve. Right, so eat what you kill. That's it, eat what you kill and be thankful that you was able to kill it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, to the parents that, that they say, I'm not gonna make them do, you don't have to. That's right. That's completely that's, that. your choice. I'm with you, right. you tell them, he ain't gotta work out, he ain't got to. Right. But don't bitch and moan and complain. Don't be out there cussing the coach don't out, cause he ain't playing. Don't cuss the coach, that's my don't be mad cause he ain't playing. That's right. You got what you deserve. You got what you deserve. The work you put in, that's what you got you out of. Get in what you put out. That's I it. mean, you get in, yeah, you get out what you put in. Right. But wait, 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 mm -hmm. one more thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like this here too. Parents also have to be realistic to what their kid can and cannot do. That's be right. realistic to what you can and cannot do. That's right. With, if your kid, if you know your kid, 300 pounds, don't put him on sprint team. He ain't not gonna run no sprints. I mean, he can run it, but don't be he mad at him. Right. You gonna put him on the basketball team or whatever. Yeah. Motivate him to do the best he can do. And you mad because right. he's not starting and getting all the play. Well, that's just where it goes. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do something that your kid can be successful. He ain't put no shots to, That's it. That's right. He's, he's supposed to do down. something where he's gonna be successful. Or her. Or her. Or, her. or right. him or her. And, and be, like you say, be realistic. Right. Don't don't go out there want this coach to make wine in the water. I mean water right. in the wine. When at the same time you know it's your, you know yourself when you at home, your child don't leave the house unless his team got practice. Right. He don't he or she don't do no extra conditioning at the house. So how can you lie to them and say, Oh baby, you know you this, you that. You you should know as a parent that that's not reality. 
It's like saying you're gonna go to work and you don't work, right. or you, you 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 still gonna get a check. Right. You got fired off the job, but that don't work like that. All right. those get scholarships and stuff too. Right, and that that's my thing. It's like, you know, let's be realistic on it. Like, I just think that that's why I say parents play a very they play a bigger part in everything than they really really know. Because if you let your kid get away with not doing the things to become elite. Then when this coach say, I don't think that that kid is elite or this kid is elite or this girl is elite or that boy or that, or that baby, don't be mad at the coach. He just stating what he see that you already know because you know your kid ain't doing it. You cannot, listen to me, I'm saying this, you cannot be elite if you're not working on your game on a regular basis. Can I do it? That don't mean run yourself to death. That don't mean kill yourself, lift the weights. That doesn't mean that. But you, if you're not working on your game, other than when your team got practice, whether it's the school team, A team, whatever, I, in my opinion, because there's no test that, can, there's no facts that can prove this or nothing. But really it is, but it's not. There's no scientific fact, no scientific method. That's what they say. But chances are you're not going to be elite. And if you are better than the people you are dealing with today, it's going to catch you. Because in order to be elite at something, you got to keep working at it. Right. You got to. I don't care what it is. If you're a painter, you got to keep working at it. If right. you're a DJ, you got to keep working at your music because they're coming out with new, other other DJs are coming up with new stuff. And you got to be able to roll with the punches. Or you're going to go to a competition, a DJ competition, and you you hell of a with the stuff that was last year or two years right. ago. Right. But here this new DJ come, boom, flip the script and come with some stuff. And you're like, I've never seen that. Well, you ain't gonna see that you because all, you, you ain't all, working on your craft. You always have to grow your craft. And another, another flip side of it is, you gotta know if you suck at a craft. You gotta know. Even though you love it, yeah. you love it, you eat, yeah. sleep, breathe it. Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody, it's only five people that can be on this court. Yeah. Probably 15 that can be on that team. That's right. Right? Yeah. But I still got eight coaches. Yeah. So you really, you can go be a coach then. You right. can find you some way to fit in. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you gotta figure. You, you gotta, gotta know. You hit. suck. I suck. I need no credit because I think it's my cup. You suck. You suck. So yeah, and, and that's, that's the, the way thing. it goes. You gotta be real with it, and you don't have to. The other part that parents have to realize, you don't have to be great today. If you're in middle school or, or even high school, you don't have to be great today. Oh, but no, are no. you? You don't have to be great today because you can get better if you're working on your craft. You don't have to so, be great today. Everything got expression there. So I, I everything got expression there. I agree so with that, that. means you got to use it before you, it expires. But you're not going to, I don't know people that are great in middle school. But but I'm just saying, but everything, I'm not saying you got to be great in middle school. What I'm saying is, you sooner or later, you got to take the shit to get out of that pot. I, that's you what know? I'm saying. You can, you can grow into it, but, you, but my point was, you have to be working to be great. Oh, yeah. You see, like, if yeah. I'm in the, I'm in the ninth grade right now, yeah. chances are 99.9999% of the people are not great. In the ninth grade, okay. but I can't say well, I'm gonna just take three years off and do nothing, and then I'm gonna pop up in twelfth grade. Now I want to be great. It don't work like that, not in my opinion. But if I'm in the ninth grade and I'm working, I'm working on my work ethic. I'm keeping my discipline. I'm training myself. I'm conditioning. I'm, I'm getting my run. I'm working on my ball. Working on my skills to become great. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you. You, okay. you but you got to be doing something to try to become great. If that's what you're trying to do. You right. can't just pop in and out of it. And I think that a lot of parents don't get that. Right. They I don't, don't get that part. They don't. But that's because also because a lot of coaches, I'm not saying you, a lot of coaches blow smoke a bad. Right. They do. You cannot. They, 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 they do. do. Coaches. Because they scared Stop the blowing smoke blow up somebody's parents' ass. And that's why that's right. after why, that's problem right. why they get upset. That's why they get upset. Instead of you being real, it's like your son sucks, but I'm trying to get yeah. him better. This is what we need right. to do. Right. And I think that one thing about that too is that when you're dealing with people like that, a person would respect you better if you are. Now I think you just go to them and say your son son. Hey, keep it, keep it, keep it above. <laughs> but you got to be real with them. Don't make these folks think because you want to keep them on your roster to go out of town, or you want them to help make the make the budget even. You got to be realistic and talk to your people and say, hey, this kid needs to work on this. If you want him to be a guard, he needs to work on this. If you want him to be a forward, he needs to work on this. If right. you want him to be a, 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 a center, he needs to work on this. Right. So be realistic with your people. I would rather a parent be mad at me for telling them what I think is true than for them to be mad at me because I lied to them or because 
I just got them spending their money going out of town, making them think their kid is there, and then the kid don't play and they just spend right. fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on a trip. Right. And and right. the kid don't even and I knew I wasn't gonna play them before I left Arkansas. Correct. So I would rather you be mad at me for saying, Hey, right now, we go out of town, you know, little Johnny or little Tina, they probably not gonna play. Right. So, you know, with them not gonna play, let's not take them out of town this time. That's happened to me. People be mad, but guess what? They they not mad because they blew the money. <laughs> hey, I saved you some money. I saved you some money. So so with that being said, we ended up saving money and then we respect Coach Butter because he was real. Whether we agreed with him or not, that's they big. And at the time, you hate it. You hate it at the time. But then when you drive home and you tell them little Johnny or little Tina, see, told your butt to go out there and do some workouts. You don't get no shots. You sitting around eating that eating that pizza and juju -ju -ju well, playing that video game, and now your butt sitting at home. Yep. It's a reality check. Be real with your players, coach. Find a way. Don't just be ruining them and just dog them out, but be real with them. And if yep. you be real with them, they'll eventually get it. And somebody else will be real with them, and it's yep. gonna come. But you gotta be real. Coaches, be real with your players. Parents, be real with your child. And tell them, either you gonna invest in training and stuff like that now, or you gonna pay for school. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you choose to do, do it. But I'm telling you, be real with them. If you're not working out, it's just like recruit. If you're not doing some of the recruiting yourself, like filming your games and building uh, highlight reels to send in to coaches, the way the world is today, you hurt yourself. We ain't had this when I was coming up. Yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna tell you something else. Real facts is, parents are lazy. Yep. These days are lazy. The all of them show up and expect the microwave society, expect everything to be ready, just yep. right there. Yep. A lot of times, if a parent just get off his or her butt and go out there with the kid early on Push and play some stuff yep. with the kid, the kid would be that much better going when he goes to the coach. And then yep. you then you can you got a foundation and it helps create work in it. Right. They'll do it without you. Without you right, yourself. right. And they'll know what to do because they are past that moment and say, hey, right. I'm not going to buy no damn two hundred dollar Jordans and you ain't playing, you ain't even working like Jordan. Well, you, you don't have to have two hundred dollar Jordans. You don't have to have two hundred and fifty dollar LeBrons. You don't have to have that right. for me to be a good parent. But guess what? If you want me to be running up and down that road chasing tournaments and chasing this stuff, you got to give me something. And giving me something is working out, keeping your grades up in school, doing more than what the average person do. Because guess what? We played on the high school team too, and I'm the one running up and down that highway. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you what I believe. This is a personal belief with Coach Jeff. A kid that, that pouts and don't give his all out here, and something that he can say he loves to do. It's right. the difference between a kid that's just good at it because his parents making him do it. Right. A kid that loves, let's say basketball, right. his or her, they, they love really volleyball want they and really, really want, want it. it. They will try hard out there. They know the same ones that try hard in the class. That's right. Because they know it's something that's going to be taken. That's right. You something will be taken. But yeah. a kid that's out here that's just good, he just go through the motions out here. Yep. He just go through the motions in class. Yep. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's yes, a difference. That's how your work ethic that's is a big there. Difference. It's a big difference. And those are the people that be successful a lot of times in life that work hard. I totally when you agree. get something that you love. I totally you know what I mean? Agree. Yes, I totally you, agree. If you love it like you say you do, you will work hard. That's right. And do it without Put nobody. Some effort, some yeah, extra effort yeah, into it. Because yeah. you know what it is. Yeah, you can't run me off. You can't run me off. I, you I'm know here. what it is. Right. When, you, when you go to them tryouts and them camps, UAPB camp, it's 200, let's say it's 200 kids in there. Yeah. And you go to this camp and you just regular. You ain't doing nothing to stand. I saw a clip with Bozeman on Instagram and they didn't show the kid, but he was talking to the kids. He was like, this kid stood out because I heard him being vocal. He talking to his teammates. He telling them what to do, where to be, how to get there, rotate, watch your back. He said that made me, he caught my attention with just that. So guess what? That kid got all Bozeman attention for the rest of the day. He might, I don't know who the kid was, they never showed him, but he was just saying how, if you hear there's 200 kids here and you just regular, you look like the rest of them. Right. You ain't done nothing to stand out. Whether it's on, defending, talking, diving for loose balls or what. What but are you doing? Also, also, if <laughs> I hate to be like this, but kids that are not as good but work hard, the coaches, whether the school administrators, everybody else, go a little bit, go a lot further 
for that kid and they grab that kid and give them the benefit of the doubt. You get the benefit and, it, and a whole bunch of stuff that you normally would. Yep. You see I, what I, mean? I totally agree with that. Subconsciously you're gonna do that. Yeah. So it's just like like if you got a, a, it's like your home kid. If you got a kid at home that do what they supposed to do and do what they supposed to do in the classroom and then your second child just don't care about school, ain't doing his chores, you gotta fuss at him. He don't always get that. He, he, he gonna get three hots in the car. He gonna eat, he gonna put some clothes on his back, he gonna get shoes on his feet, but guess what? The other one that's doing what he's supposed to do, he, he might get uh, shotgun damage. Right, right. <laughs> he might get another, actually he might get him a prayer toy. You know, and I ain't saying you don't do all of them the same, but I don't, me not buying you a pair of Jordans, I'm just using that two hundred dollar pair of Yeez, three hundred dollar pair of Yeez ain't gonna make me a good or bad thing. No, no, you know, and you go the extra mile for the kid that's that's doing their best, that's trying to be right. Yeah, you know. So with that, I'm saying, parents, it's our responsibility as parents and coaches, especially I'm gonna just stick on parents, parents to push your child. You, it is your responsibility to push your child if he say this is what he want or she want to push them to be great. You have to push. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't push them in an area that they don't want to do. But if it's something that they say they want, it's our job to push a little bit. Walk past that room and say, hey, let's go, boy. I'm going to sit outside while you do your last. Because guess what? Running up and down that road for AU is expensive. College is expensive. So either you're going to push them now, or you're going to be pushing them out the house at 21. Talking about you can't be in here no more. Yeah, you're going to be on the couch, huh? So, and I'm going to say that in closing. It is our responsibility as parents to push our child to be great. And if you don't think so, you're wrong. Yeah, wrong. Until next time, I am Coach Butter. Coach Jay. And we represent the North Side of Sports. Sponsored in part, today's show was sponsored in part by First Place Transportation, Family Elite Groups and Services, Sophisticated Urban, Geeks and Athletes, Altruistic Insurance Group, Next Phase Sports Youth Basketball Organization, and Presidential Basketball Workouts. Until next week, swish.